To be honest, 2024 so far has not been an exceptional year for horror gaming, especially when we compare it to the last year, which had Resident Evil 4, Alan Wake 2, Outlast, Amnesia, Dead Space, and the list goes on and on. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! The flow of good horror games in 2024 feels a little bit slow, and only a few titles can catch your eye whether in the indie or big-budget fields. However, with that being said, there are actually a few horror games coming out in the upcoming months that might really save the year for us and breathe new life into our dusty gaming libraries. I decided to make this short video to showcase these games briefly, explain them to you, and also to get some recommendations from you in case you are waiting for a specific other game that I'm not aware of. Anyway, without further ado, let's start. I have been keeping an eye on this game for months now, and many people online are calling it the next Resident Evil and all that good stuff. But even though I don't believe it comes close to Resident Evil, it still feels unique, because it might have an interesting story aside from the impressive graphics. The game takes place in the fictional town of Pine Harbor, a once peaceful fishing community that was sadly afflicted by a mysterious technological disaster that has shrouded the town in bizarre fog and made it a wasteland. We will take on the role of a survivor who must navigate this desolate landscape, understand what the heck is going on, and potentially find a way to escape, or at least remain in one piece until help comes. The game is obviously inspired by classics like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, and this is evident in the emphasis on exploration, resource management, and encounters with creepy creatures, but we still don't know if they were once humans or not. The good thing here is that the game doesn't rely much on jump scares, and it seems to build a more pervasive sense of dread through its atmosphere. The dense fog obscuring vision, the unsettling soundscapes and the decaying environment all contribute to making you feel isolated and vulnerable. In the full game, it's expected that we can explore a wide space of the town, interact with its surviving inhabitants if we find any, and probably even make choices that impact the narrative, which makes the experience feel more personal and the stakes even higher. If you're interested in all of this, then I advise you to get your hands on the free demo before the game comes out on April 25th, which is less than two weeks away. I don't know if it will turn out to be good or bad, but I do know that it's interesting enough to check it out when it releases. I'm pretty sure some people might see this game and say, what? This is not a horror game. Why are you including it on a list of horror games? This makes no sense. Well, my friends, as someone who has loved horror gaming with all its colors and tastes, since I was a kid, there's something I learned over the years, which is appreciating games that hide the horror behind other themes. In case you don't know, Hellblade is a game that belongs to the dark fantasy category. And as I explained before, dark fantasy is a subgenre that was meant to include elements of horror and paranormal unsettling atmosphere. So there's no way I would miss this detail in a game like this. The first Hellblade game won praise for its innovative portrayal of psychosis and mental illness. And this is enough to keep me interested. The game's protagonist, Senua, is a warrior who suffers from psychosis and the world here is seen through her disturbing perspective. This means that you need to navigate a world where Senua's delusions are everywhere and you can't determine what's real and what's not. Hellblade 2 is set to continue Senua's story, 
but this time her journey will be in Iceland, where she will face new challenges and threats, and the developers have said that the installment will be even more ambitious than its predecessor, both in terms of its story and its visuals, which look phenomenal to be honest. In case you didn't realize it by now, most of the footage that you're seeing here is actual gameplay and not cutscenes. The developers are using the Unreal Engine to its full power, and their goal is to make the gameplay feel very cinematic, as if you're playing in an actual movie. However, this comes with a price, and the price here is that the game will be 30 FPS for Xbox users, but if you're a PC user like me, then rest assured because you get higher FPS in that case. Performance aside, my main focus for this game is on the story and lore, because from what's been shown so far, it seems like the mental illness is still strong here. And Senua will have a harder time dealing with her own mind than anything else, and this is why I believe there are clear elements of psychological horror here that I can't overlook. Anyway, this game is coming very soon, on May 21st, and I'm keeping it on my wishlist, because it might actually be one of the best experiences this year. Tell me in the comments if you're excited about it, because if you are, I might give away a free Steam copy to one of you guys who really wants to play it. If you really want this game, leave a comment below and explain why you're interested in it. Student at Wenhua University, the last images we have of Huang Tingting are in the elevator of the school's Daoren building. The surveillance footage shows her making some bizarre movements, and soon after, she disappears into thin air. The police released the footage imploring the public for help, but it yielded no results. That was 15 years ago to this day. One of the most interesting Asian indie horror games I played in the last two years is a Taiwanese game called Bridge Curse Road to Salvation which takes its name from a popular movie that came out prior. And after two years of waiting, the sequel is finally closer than ever, and we will get our hands on it very soon. This time, the game throws you into the heart of a twisted experiment, a film club at Wenhua University, notorious for its spooky reputation, attempts to use a ritual called the Carnival of Horror to bring new members. But as usual, the ritual backfires, unleashing a nightmarish curse upon the participants and a messed up scenario that you need to deal with. However, the enticing part of this mess is that the game allows you to control multiple characters. Each character brings their own perspective and skills to the table, forcing you to adapt your strategies as you explore the university's labyrinthine corridors. But be careful. Outsmarting and evading terrifying spectral entities will be a constant challenge. As you can see, things can get pretty tense here, and sometimes you just need to mind your own business and leave these creatures alone. Anyway, what I loved about the original game was the rich gameplay, and obviously it's even richer here. You'll need to use a school map to uncover hidden pathways and escape routes because the environment holds the key to survival. The special thing about Asian games is that they're known for using folklore from their own traditions, but I feel like they're also using a real-life reference here, because the girl in the elevator reminds me a little bit of Eliza Lam, the Chinese-Canadian girl who mysteriously died in 2013. Anyway, if this game meets your taste, then keep in mind that it's coming on May 9th, which is less than a month away.
There's no way my wishlist would be complete without an adventure game, where the journey is breathtaking and scary at the same time. And this is why Little Nightmares is among the experiences that can save us this year. After the huge success of the first two games, this precious series comes back to us with another installment that will most likely make this franchise even more popular. In this bizarre new world, the protagonists are low and alone, two kids who are stuck in a creepy thing called the Spiral, a collection of nightmarish landscapes probably representing distorted realities. The goal here is to escape a larger, more dangerous world called Nowhere. And in order to do so, you need to work with your companion to grapple with the threats, solve puzzles, and most importantly, remain alive. If you believe this is cool enough, then you need to know that it gets cooler, because you can actually live this journey with a real friend who can play with you online if you want the other character to be controlled by a human. So far, we still don't know the exact date for the release, but it has been confirmed that it's coming sometime later this year, and I'm definitely ready for it. There's no way this is not one of the most anticipated games of every PC gamer this year, because I'm positive that PC gamers know how big of a deal it is and why it deserves attention. Stalker is a bizarre franchise in every sense of the word, because it's one of those games that has insane quality, but somehow it seems like it's not mainstream, and only a special group of people played it. After long years of disappearance, the series is finally making a comeback thanks to a partnership with Xbox, and it literally looks so incredibly good as if it's being made by one of the biggest studios in the industry. Only I didn't choose that path. Unlike you. In this installment, once again, we find ourselves in the Chernobyl exclusion zone after a deadly catastrophe. But this time with more detailed environments, a dynamic weather system, and a haunting soundscape that will draw you deeper into the zone's desolate beauty. The zone here is bigger and more open than ever before, and we will have greater freedom to explore abandoned settlements and forge our own paths through the story. And speaking of paths, I forgot to mention that the game has a non-linear narrative, which means your choices will have a significant influence on the story and the fate of the zone itself. I am blind. But it is you who cannot see. You can choose to take on quests for various factions, engage in trade, or simply try to survive on your own. As you can see, the visuals here are insane. And this is thanks to the use of Unreal Engine 5 to help bring the zone to life in all its horrifying detail. With that being said, let's not forget what made this series special in the first place, which is survival horror. You'll need to manage resources like ammunition, food and medicine while facing mutated creatures and hostile factions and going through unpredictable areas with deadly environmental effects. People who played the original game know very well how hard it can be and I really hope this one will be similar to make the challenge worth it. After two years of waiting, we finally have a clear release date of September 5th, 2024. And if you're excited about this, then let me know in the comments below because I might also give away a free Steam copy to one of you who is really passionate about the game. The only thing that motivates me to offer these gifts is that I want the game to go to someone who actually wants to play it and would be happy to get it for free. If you are one of those people, then let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Она не могла быть свободна, пока он жил. Зато теперь. Посмотри на нее. Нет, Скиф. Я не отдам ее никому. Зона дала мне жизнь. Новую жизнь. Жизнь, которую я готов вернуть, если потребуется.
These were the five games I'm waiting for the most this year, but they're not the only interesting ones, of course. There are many other games I'm keeping an eye on and waiting to see if they deserve a video or not. One of those games is Beyond Hanwell, which seriously looks like a promising survival game with very impressive visuals and a spooky atmosphere. I played the demo and I loved it, and I'm now waiting to see how the full product will be in August when the game releases. Anyway, as I said earlier, please leave your recommendations in the comments below, because I seriously want to know if I'm missing any amazing games coming out this year. Give this video a like if you loved it, and I hope to see you soon. Now go downstairs to the basement and lock the door. Don't open the door to anyone.